This is the video for the higher level topic on B3.3, muscles and motility, and we'll be taking a closer look at muscle structure. In general, muscles are going to create some kind of movement, but we need to open our mind to what movement could actually be in an organism. Movement is a universal feature, and so that means it's something that every living thing has in common. Now, there's two types of movement. There's movements within the organism, and there's locomotion. So locomotion, I think, is the easiest one to envision. It's moving from one place to another. But not all organisms do that. Only some organisms do that. However, all organisms are gonna have some kind of movement within them. Even if they're a single cell, they still have to be able to get things to move around. Even a sessile organism, something that remains in one location, still needs to be able to move things around in its own body, even like a plant, okay? So motile organisms can do locomotion, okay? That's moving from one place to another. Sessile organisms remain in one location, so no locomotion, but still have movement from within. When you look at a muscle underneath of a microscope, um, you're going to notice that it has stripes, okay? And those stripes are what gives it its name, striated muscle fibers. Now, those stripes are caused by repeating units called sarcomeres. So if I take a look at a muscle fiber, I'm gonna go back and erase this in a minute, but if I take a look at a muscle fiber, I'm going to notice some repeating units called sarcomeres. So let's zoom in and draw a sarcomere. I'm gonna draw it in two different states. I'm gonna draw it in its relaxed state and then again in its contracted state. So sarcomeres are going to go from one end to the other and these ends are called Z lines. So I have a Z line, that's a Z, <laughs> on one end and a Z line on the other end of my sarcomere. Attached to these Z lines are um, a thin fiber, a thin type of protein called actin. Okay, so actin is going to be attached to my Z lines, and that's what this is. I'll go back and I'll color code that later. In the middle of my sarcomere is a much thicker um, protein, and this is called myosin. So myosin is going to be in the middle. And I remember that by um, thinking that myosin M is in the middle. And um, it's a little bit thicker because it's not as active as actin, <laughs> okay? So this is what my sarcomere would look like when it is relaxed, okay? So when it's relaxed, I have relatively little overlap between where the myosin and the actin is. In order to get a muscle to contract, you need to shorten it. And so that's going to mean that my Z lines need to come closer together. What does not change is this myosin. So the myosin is going to stay kind of in the same place. And what's going to happen is that it is going to pull those actin filaments closer towards the center. So the Z line is still attached to the actin, okay? But now what's happened is that this actin has slid much closer to the center, okay? And I can see that my Z lines have come closer to the center as well. And so this is what a relaxed and contracted sarcomere look like. And you can see this is kind of a much more detailed picture here. Here in blue are these myosin filaments. So I'll try to color code that here. So myosin is in blue. It's this thick filament here in the center. It's going to stay in one place. Okay, so that's blue in this picture as well, although I have three of them in this nice drawing. And then this actin filament. So these are thinner okay, and they're going to be attached to these Z lines on the outside, 
and they are going to swing in, they're going to slide in closer to the center during a muscle contraction, okay? And so I see those here on this drawing as well. So let's look at that in a micrograph. So here in this top one, the Z line is right here. I've got two right here and right here. So this is one sarcomere. And then this one sarcomere becomes shorter during a contraction. So the Z lines are getting closer together. All right, I'm not gonna label these, but these are Z lines over here also. All right, so what are we looking at in the middle? Well, I want you to notice that this very dark band here, it's the same width in both pictures. What is that dark band? Well, this dark band is myosin, and that, as I'm, again, that is the same as in both pictures. The myosin stays in the middle, and it does not move. What is moving are these Z lines, and that's because the actin filaments are sliding closer in towards the center, okay? So here again, these actin filaments are gonna be running in this direction, okay? Like this and like this and like this, okay? Here are my actin filaments. And then when it is contracted, Again, now my actin filaments have run all the way in towards the center, and that has kind of taken the sarcomere and shrunk it down. What we're looking at here in this middle, this is where there's only myosin, here is where there is only actin, and this very dark region is where the myosin and the actin are overlapping. Down here, we can see that there is no more region <laughs> where there's only myosin, that it's just a very dark band all over the place where the myosin and the actin have overlapped, and the area where there's just actin has gotten much smaller. All right, so just to color code this one more time, this light band where there's only actin gets much smaller when it's contracted, okay? And then I'm seeing a larger area of actin myosin overlap, which shows up as very dark banding in this micrograph. So let's try to figure out how this actually happens, okay? What is it that myosin does to slide those actin filaments closer towards the sarcomere? Let's zoom in and figure out what we're looking at. I'm actually gonna start with this picture down here, um, right here, actually we'll start over here. Okay, so what are we looking at? This thick filament is myosin. Okay, so I have it labeled up here, but this is myosin. And on the myosin, they have these little heads these heads attach to this actin filament, okay? So this is actin, this is myosin, and myosin somehow has to get actin to slide towards the center of the sarcomere. Here's how that's gonna happen. On this myosin head, there exists an ATP molecule. ATP is hydrolyzed and turns into ADP. Okay, and what that's going to do is that is going to activate this myosin head. That myosin head can then form a cross bridge. A cross bridge is this connection between actin and myosin. So when we say cross bridge, I mean that this myosin head will actually attach to a binding site on actin, okay? Then what we're going to notice is that this myosin head flexes towards the center, okay? And so that, again, is a result of that myosin head flexing, okay? Flex means to bend, and that's going to slide the actin towards the center. So here's what we've seen so far. Here's actin, here's the myosin head. ATP is hydrolyzed, that activates the head, the myosin head attaches to actin forming a cross bridge, and then the myosin head flexes, and that's going to move the actin towards the center of the sarcomere. Well, what we really need to do next, okay, attachment and flexing, is I need to detach, and then I need to reactivate, form a new cross bridge, and flex again. And so why do we need ATP for muscle contractions? In order to break the cross bridge, okay? So ATP is going to attach, 
that is going to break the cross bridge and then we can start all over again. Okay, so just another quick summary. Again, the whole goal is to get actin to slide towards the center of the sarcomere. ATP hydrolysis, myosin head activation, cross bridge formation, flexion, okay, attach new ATP, break the cross bridge, and then reattach, flex, re break it, reattach, flex, so on and so forth, until we get that actin to slide towards the center of the sarcomere. Now, one of the things we did not include in our original drawing of the sarcomere is a protein called titan. We did include the proteins actin and myosin, but we didn't include titan. Titan connects the Z line to the myosin filaments, so it's right in here. All right, and we can imagine that when this sarcomere is relaxed, what that's going to do is it's going to slide the Z-line farther away from the myosin. So again, in a contracted sarcomere, these Z-lines are close together and that actin has slid pretty close to the center. In a relaxed sarcomere, that actin has now kind of slid back towards the edges, okay? And what that's doing is it's causing this protein called Titan to stretch. Look how um, tightly coiled it is when it's contracted. When that sarcomere relaxes, that Titan is going to stretch and it almost forms like a spring. It's a very elastic polypeptide. It's a huge polypeptide and it can stretch and it gets all this potential energy. And that's when the sarcomere is relaxed. So imagine in a relaxed muscle, we almost have like a spring. And that way, when we have a contraction the next time, that Titan can recoil and that helps make the contraction even stronger. It helps make it easier for that actin to slide in towards the middle.